Don't ever want to be the second best version of somebody else. You want to be yourself, the best version of you. It's very, very important. It's much more fulfilling to, to dance and create from that place. Hello world, welcome back. Here we are with another tutorial, uh, another video giving you tips insight into the industry when it comes to dance, choreographing, teaching. Uh, thank you for returning. If you haven't already, if this is your first time, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you <laughs> make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like, make sure you comment. Like we live off of your feedback. That is what guides us, tells us which direction we should go with every single video. It really, really helps trying to do something really impactful for the community, give you something of value to help you and inspire you, motivate you, give you a little bit more clarity on how to accomplish your dreams. Talking about dreams, it was a huge dream of mine to like travel the world and teach dance. I would always see these flyers of all these different choreographers that I looked up to, different teachers that I looked up to, and I would always imagine myself and visualize myself like being on that flyer for Fair Play Dance Camp or Urban Dance Camp or Real H2K, which now I've taught at all three of those, which is insane. And now I've been able to do that. I've traveled literally all over the world. I've seen a lot, I've been able to meet a lot of people. I've been able to eat a lot of really great food <laughs> and also the impact I've been able to have. So that's what I'm all about. And that's what you should be about as a teacher. So let's discuss first, who should teach? Who should be a world traveling teacher, right? So again, I'm all about intentions. I talk about intentions a lot, right? And I think it's really important if you're gonna be teaching dance, you have to really want to teach. You have to really want to help people. That has to be your priority. It can't just be about you showing off or showing how cool your steps and your moves and your choreography is because it's really not, it's not fair. You got to think about you, if you have a teacher come teach you dance, if they travel to your city or whatever, and they're teaching a workshop and you take that workshop, and if they're there for themselves and not there for you, that's not gonna feel too great, right? That's not gonna be a good experience for you. You're not gonna wanna take from that person again. Uh, it's gonna feel like it's very selfish of them to do that. I actually was talking about this in class yesterday, here at KM. Um, you, you get what you give, right? So. The more you give, the more you will get. So that's what you really want to think of as a teacher. If you're not willing to give anything as a teacher and you just want to get attention and likes and validation and all that kind of stuff, you should not be teaching. Please do not, don't do that. That's not right. There's too much of that going on in the community. It's, it's not okay, okay? Okay, but if you do love teaching, you love helping people, you want to see the next generation thrive, you love dance, you want to push the culture forward, then those are the people that should be teaching. So I have five steps, it's five steps for you to be a world traveling teacher. One second, somebody's not at the door. One second, come in. The first thing is your training. That is a very, very, very important part. Again, if we're talking about giving, you have to have a lot to be able to give a lot. Also, the training never really stops as a teacher because you constantly want to be able to evolve so that you have more and more to give and you're constantly inspiring your students, right? So, I would say like you definitely want to make a name for yourself as a dancer first. And not even just about making a name for yourself, but you really want to be developed, you really want to train. And, and again, like I want to, I really want to emphasize that this is a long process. This takes years. This process, I know nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to just start traveling the world like next week. Like it did, but it just doesn't work out like that. I would say definitely you want to train, train, train for years, right? And and I assume that most people who are watching this, you've already done the training. Um, this is not for people who just started dancing yesterday. But I just want to emphasize that first, you want to train as much as possible. Go to as many conventions, camps, workshops. Just get your name out there as a dancer and also develop yourself as much as possible. Get as much information into you. Do your, do your research, study, know what came before you, you know? 
If you don't know what came before you, you can't know what's coming next. You can't know what the future is, right? So you really gotta know where everything comes from. And this is no matter what style of dance you're teaching. You have to really know the style, have the right information to make sure you're communicating that information to your students. Very, 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 very important. So really make sure you develop yourself first as a dancer. So first, you wanna train as much as possible. You wanna assist, you wanna learn. You wanna learn, 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 learn as much as you possibly can. Learn as much as you possibly can. Can't stress that enough. That's the very, very first step. Second, after that, I think this is really gonna help people. Finding your style, okay. So, um, like I said, finding your style really starts from spending a lot of time with yourself, working on yourself, exploring, finding out how you wanna move. Right? Really giving yourself a chance to get creative and explore as much as possible. That's a big part of finding your style. And also, the problem is not really finding your style, it's really accepting what your style is. Accepting your movement, the way you like to move, the way your, your body likes to move kind of naturally or through the training that you've had, what kind of naturally comes out. So it's kind of like a little bit of what naturally comes out and also you exploring and being okay with what makes you unique. You don't ever wanna be the second best version of somebody else. You wanna be yourself, the best version of you. It's very, very important. It's much more fulfilling to, to dance and create from that place. And if you think about any of the top world traveling teachers, they have a very unique style. If you think about somebody like a Paris Global, people love her because she's unique. She has her own thing going on. She's not just trying to mimic and, and imitate somebody else. And that's what makes her creative and that's what makes her inspire all of us, even, even myself. It's because she is so herself. We look at them and that's like, oh, that's like really interesting to us. So don't just try to mimic somebody else. You really gotta find what, what's your uniqueness, what's your creative outlook. You wanna, you wanna be a, a new voice in the conversation with new thoughts and new ideas. You don't wanna just be an echo of somebody else repeating everything they say and just trying to sound exactly like them, right? It's okay to be inspired by somebody, but being inspired and being an imitation is two different things. That's what your style is. It's all of everything that you've experienced kind of melted into one and also what you've experienced on your own when nobody's around, you just listening to music. That's what your style is. And you'll see a lot of that whenever I dance, whenever I choreograph, whenever I teach, you'll see so much different stuff in there because I've trained in a lot of different stuff and I've been inspired by so many different things. And I've spent a lot of time freestyling just on my own. And I like moving the way I like to move and being unique. That's when I feel the most free and that's when I feel the most fulfilled. So that's how you find your style. Again, so we've talked about the first thing was training, really, really developing yourself as a dancer, learning from other people, assisting other teachers, learning teaching, teaching tactics. And then you wanna find your own style what is you? How do you like to move? What, what kind of stuff do you like to create? And then the next step is to start small. Start teaching as much as you possibly can. Start with like privates. I learned, I've probably learned the most as a teacher, like how to develop people, how to, how to really teach and get results. Because as a teacher, that's what you want is results. You want to be able to transform a dancer and take them from here to here. So you really want to start small. T take any teaching opportunity that you can, but I would definitely say start with like, start with beginners, start with kids. Like really develop yourself as a teacher. Become the best teacher that you possibly can be. And make sure you're, you are giving people an experience when you teach them. Whenever I walk into a room with a, a dancer, I want to be able to break down exactly like what are their issues? How can I impact them the most right now? Yeah, so take as many teaching opportunities as you can to really develop that, that teaching muscle, to be the best teacher that you possibly can be. Really learn what it takes to take a dancer from here to here in as little time as possible. At this point, now you're ready to start kind of creating content and marketing yourself and putting yourself out there as a teacher, right? Go through steps one, two, and three first. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, 
right? You, it, it's not about how long it takes, it's about the quality of an artist you're gonna be. I hate this phone. I hate when it rings, it pisses me off. Create content, marketing yourself, putting yourself out there as a teacher. So this is a part a lot of people struggle with. Kind of what I wrote down, the, the three keys to content, putting yourself out there, it's really, it's collaboration, it's consistency, and it's quality. So collaboration is like, who are you working with? Are you collaborating with other choreographers? Uh, what dancers are you featuring in the videos? And it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the most famous, biggest people ever, but help, you're helping promote each other, right? You're helping show, showcase the dancers, or you're working with another choreographer, and you're kind of collaborating and creating together and cross-promoting with each other. But collaboration is what really, really is gonna help you push tagging each other, posting each other, sharing each other's audiences. So quality, what do I mean by that? I don't just mean uh, having the best, most expensive camera and it's, super, it's 4K quality and the editing's crazy, but you don't have to start there, right? It's really about is, is this, like, is the, the quality of dancing good? Is the message good? Is the story good? Is it intriguing? Is it engaging to watch? There's some videos that are not amazing quality camera wise that still inspire me today and have always inspired me because of the quality of the dancing, the quality of the information that is in the video, right? So think about that as well. Like is, is the dancing actually good? As you work your way up, you can even be shooting them just on your phone. Our phones are amazing these days, you know? So you can shoot stuff, you can start with that, but just make sure like you put a lot of effort and creativity into the actual work that you're putting out, right? Especially nowadays. Nowadays, people wanna learn from the people who actually dance really well. It's not just about like, oh, you choreograph for Madonna, Beyonce, whoever's the biggest, uh, biggest artist in the world. That matters too, but people also care about like, who are you as a, as a mover? Now let's go back to consistency. This is a major, 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 major part. You have to be consistent with putting, it can't be like you put out a video today and then you don't put out anything else for another like three months. People will forget about you. We're in the information age. A struggle for a lot of people is like, okay, how do I keep putting out quality content? Again, it's really about if you've trained, if you, going back to step one, if you've really developed yourself, if you've really trained, then even if you put up a, a 15 second freestyle video or a 15 second little piece of choreo, choreo that you're working on, it's gonna be dope because you've developed yourself. You found your style, you, like you've done, you've gone through the steps so that whenever a camera's on you, it's gonna be dope. You only have to worry about quality if, you if you're not trained. Yeah, so make sure you're consistent with putting out dope work. You know, and everything doesn't have to be the most thought out, planned out, epic concept video. I love that stuff too, but you can have a range of different kind of content you put out, yeah? And also sometimes just have a conversation. Like, talk about what you are about as a creative. Talk about your process a little bit. Let, like, let people in on who you are as an artist. I think that's really important as well too. And I'm trying to do that even myself more and more. So have different kinds of content that you're putting out. Create like a series, right? Create like a series, like, like my boy Johnny, he has a Henny Sessions, where he gets with his friends and he, he like, he's like drinking Henny and creating. <laughs> and it's dope, and it's always a dope vibe. But again, also, he is trained, he's developed, he's worked on himself, he has his own style. So he's already been through steps one, two, and three. So that's why he can put out quality content consistently, and even though it's not shot on a crazy camera, he shoots it on his phone in his garage, but he's so dope, and the people he's dancing with are dope. It doesn't matter. We still like it anyways. But um, also what I was talking about on the, on the live, with everybody watching live, you really gotta send your stuff out there, you gotta put your stuff, your work out there, and send it, when I was like, first started putting up videos, I would send it to as many people as possible to get feedback. Like, as many people as I looked up to, I was just trying to learn as much as possible. Again, always be a student, forever a student, forever a student. Put it up here, here, here on the screen. Forever 
a student. You have to be a student forever. I wouldn't send my videos and be like, hey, can you post this for me? That's like, don't do that, ever. When people send me their stuff and they just say, can you post this? I don't even watch it. Not gonna happen. Because you don't really care about developing or getting better. You're just trying to like get clout. And I'm not trying to support somebody's clout diet. <laughs> <laughs> but also at the same time, you're making, you're getting your name out there. You're helping people to see your name more and more often. And that's what you have to do as a creator, as an artist, you have to promote yourself. And I don't know why artists think like, oh, I'm, I'm good, my stuff's good. I'm, I've been doing this for so and so years, so many years, so people are gonna come find me. If you really wanna find me, you can find, no, it doesn't work like that. It does, it, even if you had the cure for cancer, you still have to promote it. You still have to market it. You still have to get the word out there. You still have to sh prove that it works. Like it doesn't matter w what you have or what you do, you have to push it. So create content, collaborate with people, be consistent, make sure it's quality, and uh, get as much feedback and learn as much as you can. And then constantly up, your, up the quality, like up what you're putting out. And the reason you have to do this the reason why you're marketing yourself and promoting yourself, people are only gonna come to your class if they know who you are. Okay, I see a lot of people complain about this online. They feel like, oh, I'm so dope and I, I have this company and we've killed it, we've won competitions or I've worked with this artist. Like, people should know who I am because I'm dope, you know? So, I, I'm, I'm a good teacher, so people should fly me out because I'm a good teacher. It doesn't matter if no one knows who I am. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. I guarantee you, every class that you've taken, you've taken it because you've heard of who the person is. For the most part, for the most part. Um, so, so yeah, that's just how it works. That's just business. People are not gonna fly out teachers that don't have a name because like, how are they gonna make the money back from like the flight, your hotel, paying you to teach? How are they gonna make that if nobody comes to your class because they don't know who you are? That makes absolutely no sense. Really think about that. You're gonna go with something you're more familiar with. So people are gonna come take class from a familiar face, a familiar name. The, the people that they've seen, the, you know, people's work that they've seen before and that they're a fan of. That's what you want to do. You, you have to get your name out there. The, you have to think about, okay, how can I be of a, a, a value to these organizers that are gonna bring me out? Am I gonna help them bring people to their event? That's, it's, that's just business. That's just how it goes. You need to get over yourself and get over it. That's just how it goes. Nobody is spared. Especially overseas, they aren't as familiar with what's going on in LA or like what choreographers are working with what artists, right? If you're overseas, all you have is social media, YouTube, stuff like that. So all you know are the names that you see on there, the names that are, the people that are making names for themselves. Yes, sometimes it gets challenging as an artist to keep creating and putting out stuff. And yeah, it's fine to take a break sometimes and step away from it and just really get, get back to like, okay, I need to just focus on me right now and just learn and like take a break from all that. I take breaks. It's super necessary. Mentally, physically, you do have to take breaks sometimes. But overall, you wanna stay consistent with putting out quality content and collaborating with people. Um, and market yourself out there, grow your name, grow your following. But if you're growing your following, make sure you're a leader and you're actually leading your followers to somewhere that is good, somewhere that's positive, somewhere that's gonna be beneficial and helpful to them. I just did a whole bunch of words. I mean, a whole bunch of like arm stuff. <laughs> just some quick little social media tactics. Um, when you're posting videos, you want to kind of get in a rhythm of posting at the same time um, consistently. So, so your following knows when you're going to be posting work. Uh, also, you got to do the hashtags. Uh, you got to crop it. Like if you're, I'm, think, I'm thinking about Instagram right now. For Instagram, you really either want to do like the vertical, like the four by five kind of format, or you want to do square as much as possible. You can do the wide, like the wide crop sometimes, but it just doesn't work on Instagram as well. You wanna fill up as much of the, the, the space on the phone as possible, and you want it to be where people can really feel like they're as close to the dancers 
they're as close to, to what you're putting up as possible. Um, so I typically try to do either square or like the vertical crop, uh, especially vertical works really, really well on, on Instagram. Um, and the more color there is, you don't want it to be super dark. You want it to be kind of like either colorful or bright. That does really well on social media. Um, and then for the most part, this is, again, these are not absolute rules, but you kind of want to keep it in between like three to five dancers is going to work really well in, in your like Instagram posts. That, that kind of works the best that I've found. And I'll, I'll do a video soon purely on social media tactics and we'll really, really dive deep into that. But those are kind of like basic uh, essentials that you, that you need to do. All right, step five. This is, the last, that's, this is the last step. The last one, create an experience. This is very important. You want to create an experience at, like, at all levels. When anyone is interacting with you, your brand, your work, it should always be an experience. Make sure it's impactful. Make sure it's thoughtful. Make sure it resonates. And that's from when it's social media or when um, like the actual classes, whenever you're teaching, you want to be present. You want to be engaged. Whenever I teach, before I teach, like I'm, I say like a prayer before I go into the room. I want, I'm always like, God, decrease me and increase yourself within me. Use me as much as possible. I want to be as impactful as possible for these students. I want to be present. I want to, I want to help as much as possible. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to fully be about the students. And that's the, my intention whenever I'm going in to classes. I want to be impactful. I want to create an experience that people are going to talk about. Because yes, content helps promote you, but also word of mouth, people talking about, yo, I took so-and-so's class and yo, it changed me. I think different, I move different. It, it helped make me a better dancer. You want to create an experience, especially, so, so once you've already gone through one through four and say you've started to travel a little bit, you start to get your first gigs here and there teaching, create an experience with the students. It's not, again, even as a dancer or, or, or anything, it's not just about getting that one job, that one opportunity. It's how do you turn that one opportunity into 10 more opportunities. And I know so many, there's so many teachers that travel the world and they go and it's like, they don't give, they don't give any kind of experience. They just like, boom, here's the steps, five, six, seven, eight, boom, 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 boom. You learn the steps. Okay, I'm gonna do my solo. All right, I'm out, I'm going back to the hotel. I don't wanna talk to nobody. I don't wanna, I don't care. You know, you gotta like engage, like especially once you've done all these steps and you've built up a fan base, these people have paid money, they've traveled, you know, they, they've sacrificed their time and money to come spend time with you and get something from you and learn something from you. And as a teacher, it's very important to, to give as much as you possibly can in those experiences because they don't, like, whenever I go overseas, they don't get these opportunities all the time. So it's very important for me to give as much as I possibly can because they've sacrificed so much to be there. And maybe they look up to me, and maybe they're a fan of me, and I wanna make sure, okay, like, you, it was worth it. It was worth it coming here to, to, to dance with me and to learn from me. You know, you really want to help people in their life. You want to create an experience. And like people have so much going on in their life, so much that they're going through and dance is their ex escape. And it would be a terrible thing for them to meet the person that they look up to and be disappointed. Yeah. So make sure anytime anybody experiences you, your name, your work, they're getting a great experience. And that's it. If you can follow those steps, you will be an amazing teacher. You'll have some amazing experiences traveling the world. Um, Brazil it was is always an incredible experience for me. The culture out there, the dancers, there's so much passion. Like I've had life-changing experiences in Brazil, in Iceland, the most beautiful place on the planet. You know, I've been all over Europe. Like I've had some amazing quality life experiences that like I wish everybody can have and I want you to have it too. So follow these steps. Um, it's gonna take some time and that's fine. Anything great is gonna take time, you know? And those are the things, those moments that are worth it, that are worth having, they, they take time to get there. But trust me, 
once once it finally happens you'll be so grateful that you went through all of these steps um i hope this helped you i hope this helped you um i'm excited to hear from you i'm excited to hear your feedback please get in the comments tell us what you think send this out to the world we're going to do more and more and more of these so i want to get the dance community i want to get everybody uh, uh, collectively together following this channel so I can help and give you as much as you as much as you want as much as you need in your career as much advice as I possibly give you and also like who would you like to see uh, come on like what guests would you like to have and also what would you like us to talk about you know like who do you want to see Jay do you want to see Nat Nat Bat Isabel do you want to see Calvin Johnny Lyle like who do you want to see um, and like, who do you want to see me feature in one of these videos? And then also, what would you like to hear us talk about? Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Love having you. I hope this helps you. Um, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and put, yo, click that notification bell. All right? Click it right now. Don't play with me. All right? I'll find you. <laughs> Thank you so much.